Welcome back guys, today's video will be about Friday Overtime, which is a recently released room part of SOC level 1 which has also been updated with more rooms, so check it out Alright, so what is this all about? So basically, in Friday Overtime, we step into the shoes of a Cyber Threat Intelligence Analyst You see how this looks like from the perspective of uh, an analyst or a specialist who gathers intelligence about malware samples so this is a real scenario, as stated by the authors of this room. The artifacts used in this scenario were read from a real-world cyber attack. So there was a cyber attack that hit a financial company, and you are the threat intelligence analyst. You received an email uh, telling you what happened from your client. So basically, this is the email sent by the client, uh, and it contains what you need to do. Along with the emails, we can see, along with the text in the email, we can see here the samples that your client has witnessed in their environment or they have, you know, found. So as a threat intelligence analyst, you're not going to analyze the malware as a malware analyst. You're going to gather intelligence about the malware. So see here in the uh, brief, these are the steps that you're going to, uh, you're supposed to do actually, but let's step into the email and see what happened. So the client, uh, you are part of Panda Pro and your client name is Financial Swift. So the client sent you an email. I hope this message finds you well. My name is Oliver Bennett from the Cybersecurity Division of Swift Spence Finance. During our recent security sweep, meaning a security assessment, we have identified a set of malicious files, which, based on our preliminary analysis, seem to be associated with. And we, uh, there is a full stop here. So basically, they have found malicious files based on their security assessment. And what they did, and here's a brief of what they have accomplished so far. They have isolated the infected systems from the network. They have initiated a comprehensive scan across all systems. They have collected and stored malware samples securely for further analysis. So the typical steps that you would do when you activate the incident response. What they're doing now, we're currently collaborating with external cybersecurity agencies and our security solutions providers to get a deeper understanding of this malware. So they're trying to get in touch with cybersecurity firms um, to analyze the malware. However, we wanted to raise this with you immediately given the gravity or the potential risk associated with the APTs. We certainly need your team's assistance with conducting a thorough review of the malware sample. All right, so they have sent us the malware samples. Looks like we're either gonna analyze the malware using malware analysis methods, static and dynamic, or depending on what we're gonna see, we might need to conduct threat intelligence. So these are, this is the sample, and don't forget to use the password provided in the email to unzip the sample. Once we unzip the sample, we can see several files. All of these files happen to be DLL files. So your job here is not to analyze the malware, as I said earlier, from the perspective of a malware analyst. These are DLLs, DLLs happen to be part of indicators of compromise. So what you're going to do here, you need to extract intelligence based off these DLLs. So remember, as a cyber threat intelligence analyst, so you are a cyber threat intelligence analyst, you're going to use the indicators of compromise to draw a complete picture detailing the behavior of the malware. I know there is no uh, executable sample here or a binary sample to analyze. That's why you are a CTR. You are not a malware analyst. You are a CTR. You are analyzing the indicators of compromise. You are here given DLLs. What's your first step? First step is to extract the hashes. So in extracting the hashes, as you can see, we picked up this sample. I uh, know this sample because it is the sample that is relevant to the scenario. And we extracted the hash, or we calculated the SHA hash of the sample. Once we have a hash, what we're going to do, or what we can do, we go to virus total, input the hash in the search bar, and we're given the analysis results. So this contains the previous analysis conducted on this hash, or on samples that have equivalent hash. Okay, so what do we have here? We have 42 hits out of 67. 42 AVs have flagged this hash. So meaning this is not a P9 sample. So we can go to details and we have a look at all of the checksums in the 5 and 256 and the types of sections. Scrolling down we can see other names of the sample and we see it is targeted against APK Android. So it's part of an Android sample and we see other activities. Interesting strings, these are the strings extracted 
when they analyze the sample as you can see they contains ps3 files it's not clear yet the nature what is the nature of this sample we can see lookups or probes to baidu which is a chinese search engine okay going now to relations in the relations we can see the uh, we can see an analysis of the urls that have been conducted by the sample so this is the baidu sample and based off the analysis here it looks it looks good it's not malicious and we have one hit on this domain it's not uh, you know considerable here contacted ip addresses so the sample contacts this ip address so it makes an external communication and you can see five flags five hits over this ip address marking it as malicious but five is not an enough number to draw a conclusion right here we see the bundle of files these are the files that come with the sample and dropped files we see some of them are ELF built to target Linux operating system so it's not clear what the sample does you go to behavior and here we see like a simulation of a dynamic analysis the domain is contacted now this is the IP address that we need later and here the file is open file is written we see shared libraries among the files file is deleted, copied so all of the queries look like related to the Python search engine. Okay, now we go to community and see what the community has to say about this. So no comments found about this. All right, the first question here, who shared the malware samples? Going back to the email, you can see at the end of the body or the signature, you can see the name of the person shared the email. What is the SHA hash of the file? We already shared this. Which malware framework utilizes these DLS as an add-on models? This is gonna be this, this, this will need long explanation. Alright, so now let's refresh this, go back to search, and take, take the hash again. Alright, so here looks like we have analyzed the previous hash uh, uh, in the first attempt. So it was 32, now we have 55. It looks like we analyzed different sample. Anyway, so this is the uh, analysis results. We go to community. And here we can see what the community has to say about this. So the verdict here is suspicious. And here we can see Yara analysis. Description detects the MakeBot audio capture plugin, which captures input and output audio streams. So it looks like this data is part of the MakeBot malware. Is MakeBot a malware or a framework to create a malware? We're going to see uh, further down the road. Here we can see two links which contain analysis reports if we jump to open both these links the semantic and we live security so in the semantic let me go over let me give you highlights of the report so here we have as you can see the advanced persistent group that used this sample is the dagger fly and here it is part of the megabot malware framework so the conclusion here is that this sample or the dls contained in this sample is part or developed using the megabot malware framework Scrolling down, we can see the MakeBot malware framework. It is designed, it's a well-designed modular framework that's actively maintained. The components of the framework are the following. So we have DLL loaders, we have executable droppers, and we have plugins. Scrolling down, we have an overview of every single DLL that comes with it, along with its nature. So if we scroll down, we can see our DLL, and it is designed to capture audio. It captures audio from the infected system. We use COM objects, these two COM objects. Basically, this DLL that we're analyzing here it is part of the MakeBot malware. It's not the malware itself. Remember, this is indicators of compromise. What it does, it captures audio. Looking at the other report by ESET, so here, um, scrolling down, we can see technical analysis. Here we can see the first URL. This URL was first used to download the first infection. This is the name of the executable. And this executable was developed again using the MakeBot um, malware framework. You see, this MakeBot framework enables you to create executable, drop executable droppers, which in turn drops DLLs. Basically, that's the main infection here. This executable and this is the OR. Let's go back to the answers. So now, as a cyber threat intelligence analyst, you have gathered not all the information, sufficient information. You have, you now you have actually learned what is the URL. And from the URL, you can learn also the IP addresses associated with the URLs. And you can see the first sample name. And now you know the objective of the DLL that you have been given. 
and the name of the module, the name of the framework used to create this DLL. Let's go back, see here. So which framework utilizes these DLLs as an add-on module is the Megabot framework. Which Mitre Entity technique is linked to using this DLL in this malware framework? To find the Mitre tactic, you're gonna have to use the Mitre Entity in CK. So how are you gonna find the, 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 the tactic? So one of the methods is to look up the name of the framework so I can make part, but there is nothing. Another way to do that is to go back to the report and the first one, semantic report. See here, the DLL's goal is to capture audio. So if we copy this and we search in audio capture, click on this. So we're given the uh, tag a technique and here the ID of the technique. So as you can see, it's part of the collection tactic. It's used to collect information. And that gives you the answer. What is the cyber chef defanged URL of the malicious download location first seen on uh, 2 November? So we go back to the first report. As I told you guys, this is the first URL which was, from which the sample was well, the executable sample. And the date here equals the date given in the question. So we're going back to, we're gonna, we can now copy this, go to cyber chef. And from here, we can just paste the URL, use the defang URL, and you'll be able to have the answer. What is the cyber chef defang IP address of the C and C server first detected on uh, 14 September 2020? Now, you can find the answers to, in, in using two methods. The first one is to go back to the analysis of the hash details and scroll down to contacted IP addresses relations. Let's see if you find IP addresses here. You can't find IPs. Let's go back to details. So this DLL does not contact or does not um, exhibit any sort of DLS communications as seen here. That's the preliminary analysis. You can always dig deeper and find more details. So no DLS names contacted. As I can see. Alright. Okay, so go back to the report. The other one. Now, these are IP addresses, right? But these are the IP addresses of the first sample, the executable sample. You want, in the question, they want you to find the IP address detected first on 14 September. Let's see if there is more details here. We have two IPs. First one contacted on 9. July and the one can track it on 14 September. This is the IP address we want, and you can use Cyber uh, Chef to define the IP. Last question: What is the what is the SHA hash of the spy agent family spyware hosted on the same IP targeting Android devices on November 16, 2022? Remember that this is the IP address that we have found earlier, and it is one of the IP addresses of the C2 servers. They want you to find other uh, agents or other malwares used or developed on this IP address or on the C2 agent which has this IP address. So we're going to do as a CTI analyst, you have to use server spread intelligence platforms to gather intelligence. So here we can uh, go back to server chef and have the original form of the IP, look it up. We have five hits. We go to relations. You can see that this IP hosts a C2 server which communicates these files. Among the files, there is a hash. And as you can see, it targets Android. Our client uses, or our client has found the malware samples that indeed target Android devices. So we're gonna have to pick this up. This is one of the files that uh, is being served using this IP address. And it has 42 hits. If you click on this, we can see 42 flags on this. Going to details, we can find the hash. So that was it. That's, is the, that's the analysis uh, performed by a cyber threat intelligence analyst. You gather uh, intelligence. Intelligence is how information about information about the threat actor, how they created the malware, what are the tactics and techniques they use, and 
uh, artifacts such as URLs, executable samples, IP addresses, hashes. That's the job of the cyber threat intelligence. Analyst. I hope guys you like this, and I'm gonna see you later.